Okay, hello there. Good afternoon. Um, I have decided that during the, the masky time, that once in a while, depending on what we're doing, uh, I'm going to, instead of talking in class specifically about some stuff, maybe some of the easier stuff or not quite as, we don't, I don't need to explain too much, uh, I'm going to do videos and you guys watch, take notes, and then I'll be there, of course, if you have any questions, and you will be responsible for this stuff. So this is a quick little page I'm going to do on the experimental method on page uh, two of your of your of your uh, outline. It shouldn't take long. It wouldn't take us long in class either. Um, but I'm going to go through this. I'm going to take an example of, of of an experiment that and how this would work in a psychological. Uh, setting. You guys probably understand this from biology and, and chemistry and all that, but um, this will be a little bit different context. So, for an experiment, okay, I don't need to tell you what an experiment is. That's easy. You've got five terms we're going to go over, and I think I did it out of order. Sorry. Um, anyway, first thing, hypothesis, okay? Generally, the, the statement, what the experimenter thinks is going to happen, okay? So, what I've decided here is... Um, since we are the prison town, let's talk about prison cells and, and areas and stuff. Let's say that the experimenter thinks that if we paint the walls of the prison lavender, let's go nice lavender, um, then that will improve behavior among the inmates because it'll calm them down. If you've heard of color theory and you know, red versus green versus and so on. Okay, so that's our hypothesis. If we paint the walls pink, prisoner misbehavior will decrease. Okay? So, you need two different groups to study. You have what is called the control group. Okay? And your definition, this will be the group that does not get the uh, dependent variable. Or independent variable, sorry. Okay, not get the independent variable, which we'll explain here. So this would be, let's say you got um, wing A and wing B. So wing A is going to get regular prison, whatever color that is. Okay, that's the control group. Okay, the experimental group is going to get the independent variable. Okay, they're going to get, wing B is going to get um, the pink walls. Or, or not pink, sorry, lavender, lavender walls, okay? So again, the control group does not get the independent variable, the pink walls. The experimental group does get the pink walls, okay? So to define this, your independent variable is what the experimenter changes or manipulates. Paint, paint color of the paint of the walls. Think about sound or what time you go to lunch. I mean, all these different things, okay? And then finally, the last thing, the dependent variable, is how the experimental group reacts to the dependent variable. Or to the independent, Jesus, to the independent variable, sorry. So, will behavior change? Whether it does or whether it doesn't, it's still, that's the, that's the, uh, the result. So, in theory, if the behavior changes, then you paint the whole prison pink, and voila, you've got better prisoners. Okay, but just think about all kinds of things here. Uh, things that might affect sleep, things that might affect uh, stress levels. Um, in a sense, you know, what torture methods. I mean, there's so many ways to go here with this kind of stuff. Um, and I'll, we'll talk about some real experiments that, that happened uh, in the past when we get to the disorders and, and to some of the researchers and things like that. But that is a quick little go through on how an experiment is set up in a psychological setting. So if you have any questions, let me know. And see you later. Bye.